In this video, we're going to focus on the SR latch circuit, but particularly the one using NAND gates. I have another video where I talked about the SR latch circuit using NOR gates. But let's begin with the truth table for NAND gate. So let's say we have the inputs A, B, and the output C. Now, the way I like to remember it is the truth table for an AND gate. When A and B are on, the output will be on. That's for an AND gate. The reverse is true for an AND gate. When A and B are on, the output will be off. In all other cases, the output will be on. So that's the truth table for a NAND gate. Now let's write the truth table for the SR latch using NAND gates as shown the way it's written on the screen. Sometimes I've seen cases where Q and Q bar, they're in opposite places and that changes the truth table. So feel free to take some notes now, and then throughout the video, we'll talk about why the truth table works the way it does. When S and R are zero, this is an invalid condition. So basically, this state is not used. But what actually happens is that both Q and Q bar, they will be one. And it makes sense why that's an invalid condition, because Q should always be opposite to Q bar. But in actuality, when, when they're both zero for the circuit, Q and Q bar will be one. But when you look up truth tables, you're going to see not use or invalid condition. So let's write one of those. Now, when S is zero and R is one, Q is going to be one and Q bar will be zero. When S is 1 and R is 0, Q is going to go to 0, Q bar is going to be 1. And when they're both 1, there's going to be no change. In other words, that's when the circuit shows memory. It's going to retain its previous output. And we'll illustrate that using examples. So here's some things you need to remember for this circuit. So when you hit the set button, what's happening is you're setting Q bar to one, which means you're setting Q to zero. When you hit the reset button, that is if there's a push button applied to the set and reset inputs, you're going to reset Q bar back to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and push that reset button so that this circuit is in its original standard condition. So once we hit that reset button, Q is going to be 1, Q bar is going to be 0. So we're going to start with those states because that's going to simplify the explanation for the circuit. So that's the state the circuit is in, at least the outputs. Q is 1 right now and Q bar is 0. So. For our first condition, we're going to apply no signal to the set and reset button. So there's no signal going to the inputs of this circuit. What's going to happen to Q and Q bar? Let's find out. So right now we have a zero at S. Q bar is zero. That is fed to the input of that circuit or the top NAND gate. And using the NAND gate truth table, when we have a 0 and a 0, we get an output of 1. And we can see that Q is 1. So that's going to go to the input of the NAND gate at the bottom. And R is 0. So 1 and 0 will give us a 1. So Q bar flips to 1. So Q is 1, 
and Q bar is 1. And we could see why that's an invalid condition. Q and Q bar should not be equal to each other. They should be opposites. So that's why those inputs should not be used. Now, we're going to hit the reset button. So when we hit the reset button, we're going to have these conditions. S is going to be 0, and R is going to be 1. So let's start with Q. Q is currently 1, and R is 1. So let's change that to a 1. According to the NAND table, 1 and 1 will give us 0. So Q bar is going to flip to 0. This 0 will go here, which we already have this number. S is 0. So two zeros will give us an output of one, and Q is already at one, so that's good. So Q will be one, and Q bar is zero. So by hitting the reset button, we reset Q bar back to zero. It was at one previously, but it went back to zero, or it was resetted to that value again. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna push down the set and the reset button at the same time. And we're going to see if this is the case. So let's apply a signal to S and R. Right now, R is already 1. So let's change S first. So S is now 1. Q bar is currently 0. So we have an input of 0 here. 0 and 1 will give us an output of 1. So Q is going to stay at 1. This one goes here. And R is 1. 1 and 1 will give us an output of 0. So Q bar will remain at 0. So as we can see, even though the inputs changed, the output did not change. Q remains 1, Q bar remains 0. So there was no change in the output. In this case, the circuit is showing memory. Even though the input changed, the output retained its previous output values. So now we're going to apply a different set of conditions. We're going to focus on this one here. So we're going to hit the set button, but not the reset button. So S is going to be 1, R is going to be 0. So S is not changing right now, but R is changing. So let's begin by changing R first. So let's put a 0 here. Q is currently 1, R is 0. 1 and 0 gives us 1. So Q bar is going to flip to 1. This one will change the input of the top NAND gate. So now this becomes a 1. In this case, S remains at 1. So 1 and 1 will give us 0. Thus, Q changes to 0. So as we can see in this case, when S is 1, R is 0, Q becomes 0, Q bar becomes 1. So thus we set Q bar to 1 when we hit the set button. When we hit the reset button, we reset Q bar to 0. Now for our final condition, let's apply both signals to S and R to see if there's going to be any change after we hit the set button. So S is not changing, but R is changing. So let's begin by changing R first, back to 1. So right now, Q is 0. 
So this is going to change the input to zero. So we have a one and a zero, and that is going to give us a one at the output, which we already have. So Q bar remains one. Now this one is going to go here. S is one. One and one will give us zero and Q is already zero. So it stays at zero. So thus, even though the inputs change, R went from zero to one S remained the same, S stayed at 1. The output did not change. Q remains 0, Q bar remains 1. And so we have another case of memory there. So for the SR latch circuit with NAND gates, when you hit the set button, you set Q bar to 1. And when you hit the reset button, you set Q bar back to 0. And this is for a circuit that's written this way. Sometimes you'll see Q and Q bar in reverse places, and that's going to affect the truth table that you have for that circuit.